Hello and welcome to this latest episode in our What's New in Rapid Plan series. Today we'll be looking at Rapid Plan version 3.5 and the main new features in this release are Plan stages that allow a TCP file to contain several phases of works in, lo in one location and auto templates um, are foot in the door of semi-automated traffic control planning. Other than these two major additions, as always there's a bunch of smaller improvements um, so I'd like to start with a quick selection of new productivity tips. The first thing users will notice when working in Rapid Plan 3.5 is that when you select objects by dragging a selection box, they get highlighted as you're dragging. Um, this helps you uh, to be more precise when selecting, particularly in areas where there's a lot of different objects. Um, whether you're making a new selection or um, adding or removing items from an existing one, uh, whether you're using the default or intersecting uh, selection capture modes, uh, the highlight boxes provide a live preview of which objects are getting selected. The next improvement is easier adding words to the spellcheck dictionary while you're editing text objects. Uh, previously, to add a word, you had to open up Rapid Plan Preferences and edit the dictionary there. Uh, now, simply right-click on the word that's highlighted as incorrect and select Add to Dictionary. Uh, the next thing, we have a new property in the Distance Marker object. Uh, it now has an option to indicate a dimension break line. Uh, simply set the uh, Show Break Line property to True and the marker shows this little zigzag indicating that the length of the marker doesn't correspond to the distance value shown. Um, this is obviously useful when you're drawing plans not to scale. While we're at distance markers, I'll mention one more small but useful productivity enhancement. When you select an object with control points and hold the Alt key, the control points turn into snap points that you can use to drag the whole object. Now, how is this different from dragging the object in a regular way? The difference is, this way uh, you can snap to other points, for example, to precisely join distance markers. By the way, uh, this also works for grouped objects. Hold the Alt key to expose all the available snap points. One last thing before we move on to plan stages. In Rapid Plan 3.5, we've made some improvements to the autosave system. Most of it just works in the background, making sure you don't lose your work when something unexpected like a power outage happens. We have, however, extended autosave to also cover cases where you accidentally close a tab without saving it. If this happens, um, simply go to File, Undo Close Tab, uh, or press Ctrl, Alt and Z to reopen the tab. Alternatively, um, you can just open the same TCP file again and if Rapid Plan finds a newer autosave version, it will ask you if you want to restore to this latest state. Okay, it is now time to look at the most important additions. Um, Rapid Plan version 3.5 introduces plan stages. As I've mentioned at the beginning of this video, this feature allows you to draw traffic management diagrams for different phases of planned works, all in a single TCP file and without duplicating the elements that don't change, like the road network and permanent markings. Let's look at how you would create the TCP with multiple stages. Managing stages is done via the Layers panel, um, and to start, simply click the Enable Planned Stages button in the toolbar. A set of controls for editing stages appears at the bottom of the Layers panel. Say I need to draw a plan for works with one static work zone but with different signage for daytime and nighttime. Um, the edit button here uh, is for editing the current stage in the properties panel. So let's use it and rename stage 1 to daytime and then I'll create another stage and call it nighttime. Now, if we open the drop down with the list of stages, uh, we also have an entry for the base stage, which is dedicated for drawing objects shared across the whole TCP. Each stage has its own set of layers, 
uh, but the base stage layers are actually visible in all other stages as well. So let's use the base stage to draw a road, the work zone, the delineators, and a couple of advanced warning signs. So all these objects will be shared between both our daytime and nighttime stages. Uh, since the job requires a full lane closure, we're going to have interleaving traffic on the other lane. During the day, this will be managed by flaggers at both ends of the worksite. Let's switch uh, to our daytime stage, rename its layer accordingly, and uh, draw the flagger symbols. Then for nighttime, um, we're expecting low traffic volumes so can leave the site unattended. Instead, uh, posting yield signage and some additional flashing arrow boards. Note how the list of layers and contents of, on the plan canvas change as I toggle through the stages. The contents of my base stage are visible on all other stages. Before we move on to printing the stages, just a quick note for some of our more advanced users who are familiar with using print frames. Uh, the name and other properties we've used for each stage uh, can be exposed on a print frame using text variables. Uh, for example, let me create a print frame uh, for this plan uh, with a text object displaying the name of the current stage. Uh, note how this gets updated later on. Okay, now that I have my plan completed, I will want to print or export it. I can obviously export the active stage and print region one at, one at a time, but with stages it's typically most useful to use the batch export tool instead. Uh, in fact, we've also added a dedicated menu shortcut for this. Uh, right click on the diagram, then go to export all print regions and see how our planned stages were automatically loaded in batch export. Our plan only has one print region and we'll be exporting it for both daytime and nighttime stages. For more complex plans, particularly with a changing work zone, you will typically have multiple print regions defined. The same rules apply as for layers. Each stage has its own set of print regions, but when the region is defined on the base stage, it is available for, for all other stages as well. Okay, so let's export and take a look at the output PDF. Uh, it contains our daytime and nighttime stages, each on a separate page, and with the stage name displayed in the text object withdrawn on the print frame. Well, this is obviously a very simple example of what you can achieve with planned stages. Uh, I'm sure that you can already think of different scenarios you can use this functionality for, particularly when long-term works and changing traffic conditions are involved. Moving on, the last new feature I want to present are auto templates. In short, auto templates are capable of laying out basic signage and worksite devices at a selected works location with parameters like sign spacing, calculated based on properties like road category or max speed. In other words, uh, using this feature is an attempt to semi-automate important parts of drawing traffic control plan. Uh, when you start the new plan wizard, uh, select the auto template plan type. And when you're doing this for the first time, please take a minute to read the disclaimer message on this page. Uh, it is important to remember that while we will be doing our best to provide auto templates that are accurate and up-to-date, it is always the responsibility of each individual planner to double-check and make sure that any plans they create conform with the current regulations. Press Next to move to the template selection screen. Another note I should make here is that the list of available templates in version 3.5 will be relatively short, but uh, include a handful of generic works templates 
and for some countries a small selection of typical works uh, from your regional traffic control regulations. We are planning to gradually expand the capabilities of the older template system and as this happens we will be making more and more templates available. Uh, templates are organized in modules. Uh, let's look at the generic works module. You can click here to expand it and see the list of templates it contains. Uh, then select the one you need and press next. Uh, this specific module is mostly for demonstration purposes so the template names are pretty much self-explanatory. But if you're not sure which template is appropriate for the planned works, modules marked with uh, this green question mark icon can also help you with selecting the right template by asking you a series of questions about the works. Uh, to try this out, select uh, the help me choose the right template item and then press next. We are now asked to select works location. Uh, this is a multi-step process. In general, you just have to follow the instructions displayed on top. Uh, so first navigate to the area where the works are taking place uh, and press next. Wait a few seconds for Rapid Plan to download information about roads in the area and then you can click to select a specific road. Press next again and then click to specify the start and end points of the work zone. Uh, you don't need to be super accurate, accurate with this as the points will be adjustable later on. Now after I press next again uh, comes a series of questions about the road as well as the worksite dimensions. Uh, since I picked the option providing assistance with uh, template selection, some questions will also be about the type of works and other conditions that help work out which template is appropriate in this case. Uh, so say my works uh, are taking place on one travel lane only and that the road has high volume uh, traffic conditions. Uh, a couple more questions about the taper length and buffer zone. Um, a final disclaimer note about this module being a generic presentation and not following any country specific regulations. And we move on to the already familiar final step of the new plan wizard. Uh, the location has been, uh, has been preset based on my choices before. Uh, I can adjust the scale, print region size and properties and I'm ready to create the plan. We're almost done now. Uh, as you can see we already have uh, a preview of the template layout and the final step allows for fine adjustment of parameters. I can drag the start and end points uh, of my worksite or I can use the invert button here to swap them in case it's the other lane that I want to close. I can also edit the dimensions I had specified before. Um, the layout refreshes automatically to follow the table length I've adjusted. And once I'm happy with the result, I'll just click complete and we're done. As you can see, a simple uh, lane closure setup with mobile traffic lights was automatically laid out at the specified location. I can now further edit my plan in case of the generic module I'd start with adding my region specific advanced warning sign. This particular template is obviously very simple and mostly serves for demonstration purposes. So before we finish I'll also quickly show you a more, a more complex example and also mention our plans for further development of the other template capabilities. Let's use a template from the US Federal MUTCD standard for a similar job, uh, lane closure uh, using traffic control signals. I'll select the same location as before. And again, I'm asked uh, a few questions uh, just to specify uh, the parameters. I'll stick with the defaults for now, uh, so just click next a couple of times, create plan, and again we're in template adjustment mode. As you can see, this particular template uh, is a bit more complex and it does include uh, the advanced warning signage as specified in the MUTCD. Sign spacing depends on the road category parameter, so if I change it to high speed, uh, note how the other template will allow more space between the signs. Now the speed limit I'd specified uh, in the parameters uh, is presented on one of the signs 
and again if I change the value uh, the sign gets adjusted automatically I can now click complete to finish the adjustment process um, and let's explain what the uh, verifying roads pop-up means when applying an order template, RapidPlan examines the road network to check if there's any roads that connect to our main road within the area of the worksite or the advanced warning area. Uh, in this case, we have one such road. It's the Albert Street Road here. For now, RapidPlan will just display a dialog listing such roads and let you, letting you know that you should also consider adding the required signage there. However, in our future releases, we're planning to gradually expand the capabilities of the auto template system. Uh, while the layouts are currently limited to a single continuous road only, in the future, we want to use the information about the local road network to allow auto templating works at intersections, planning detour routes, and so on. Uh, we will also be constantly expanding our coverage of regions, providing more and more auto templates conforming with local standards and regulations. With this, we've reached the end of uh, RapidPlan 3.5 overview tutorial. I hope the new tools and features will help you improve your traffic control planning productivity. And as always, if you have any comments, questions or suggestions, please get in touch with the Invariant Technical Support team. Thank you. Bye-bye.